Today on Monkey Life, newly rescued chimp Kalu gets a full medical checkup, but putting her under proves problematic. <laughs> Gas. All right, don't shout, please. Marmosets Chuck and Sid are treated to a crunchy snack, with Sid needing a little help. <laughs> You're gonna go! Plus, life hangs in the balance for the new baby woolly monkey, rejected by her mother. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. You just never know how it's going to work. The park provides a home for more than 260 monkeys and apes from 24 different species. It's been two weeks since Alison went to South Africa to rescue female chimp Kalu and fly her 6,000 miles to start a new life at Monkey World in Dorset. And she's settling in well. I'm really pleased with her progress. She seems to be a very sort of self-contained lady in terms of her emotions and sort of just taking everything in her stride. So I'm um, at, at least 35 years old, if not older. I would have expected her to be a little more out of sorts than she was. So really happy with her progress over the last two weeks. Kalu's dramatic rescue was fraught with problems. She had to be sedated by Dart and climbed a tree before the anaesthetic could take full effect, falling 30 feet to the ground. Wildlife vet John Lewis, who accompanied Alison along with animal director Jeremy, rushed to the chimp's aid and checked her over. He was unable to do a full examination due to limited facilities. But with no obvious injuries or concerns, he gave the all clear for Kalu to travel. While in South Africa, John took blood samples. Now the results are in, and they're not good. What we found is that she had really, really high blood glucose. That means sugar in her blood, which is an indicator of diabetes. And indeed, it would appear that Kalu is profoundly diabetic. Alison is hopeful it's not the more serious type 1 diabetes. It's likely to be type 2, which means changing to a good, healthy diet and avoiding the high sugar and processed foods Kalu was previously being given, plus plenty of exercise, should help manage the condition. Today, Vet John has arrived at the park to give Kalu a thorough health check. We have a treatment plan, whatever the case might be, but today's really important to find out exactly which direction we need to head with her. Aware Kalu would need to be sedated again, the team have spent the last two weeks training her. It's a far cry from the situation two weeks ago in Cape Town. The result is a testament to the trust she's already developed with the primate care staff. Lisa's been able to hand inject her, so she's been trained and become accustomed to that in an incredibly short period of time. But it means that when we come to anaesthetise, um, we don't have to use darts. I don't have to show my face and upset them and so on. So the whole process is a lot calmer. Once John's satisfied Kalu is stable, she's transferred to a travel crate and taken quickly to the park's hospital. There, the team take the opportunity to weigh her. 41.5. Very good. She's put on weight, which is a good sign the new diet is working. Mm -hmm. Once on the table, John intubates her to keep her airways clear and keep her anaesthetised. Mm -hmm. But during the procedure, she wakes up with a start. <laughs> Gas. All right, don't shout, please. Not once, but twice. No, she won't gas her down. Um, what we're going to do now is not gas her down anymore. 
John decides the best option is to knock Kalu out with intravenous ketamine. Once he's satisfied she's stable, he can get to work. First, he takes some blood samples to compare with the ones he took in South Africa a couple of weeks ago. OK, somebody like to press down on their heart. Lovely. Next, a few x-rays. John wants to be sure Kalu didn't sustain any serious, lasting injuries when she fell during the rescue. Then, he takes a look at Kalu's teeth. So, starting on the lower right... The team have been aware since she arrived that she has urgent dental issues, and on examination, it's far worse than they expected. And three... Uh, fragments of root showing above the gum only. A number of teeth are rotten and will have to come out today. Um, so we've got some dental work to do. Four? At least so far. We can start taking things out. John is careful as he works his way through the decayed teeth. They have huge roots and need to come out in one piece. I'm just trying to get the worst one out of this mess at the upper, upper right, and it is a mess. The majority are so rotten, they come out easily. Like that. So that's the last upper left molar. When he finally extracts tooth number six, John calls it a day. Yeah, right, that's the worst of it. So that is the upper right molar one. Kalu's been under for quite some time, and although there's still work to be done inside the chimp's mouth, John has extracted the worst offenders. They're all a bit mobile. That one. Yeah. This one. More treatment may be needed, but that's enough for today. Before Kalu's brought round, Lisa takes her blood glucose level to compare with the reading taken a fortnight ago. And it's good news. It's dropped significantly, which means her new diet is working. John is happy with today's examination and progress. She had a lot of dental problems, and we've resolved the worst of them, which are basically molars and premolars, the, the cheek teeth, the back teeth, so rotten that they're sitting in a, um, a sea of infected material. So we've taken those out, and once the gums heal over, she'll feel a lot more comfortable about that, which is good. We know her blood glucose levels, which were very high when she came in, have almost halved. They're not normal yet, they're not down to that level yet, but they're improving. Um, so all in all, I think it's, it's quite positive for Kalu. Kalu is taken back to her bedroom, where she can be monitored until she fully comes round. She'll be given antibiotics and pain relief for a few days, and the team will continue the good work done so far with her dietary management. Insects make up a vital part of the diet of many of the park's primates, particularly the small monkeys. Today, common marmosets Sid and Chuck are in for a treat, which will test their coordination, speed and agility, and encourage them to hunt as they would in the wild. Hi, Chuck. Hi, Chuck. Primate care member Karen has a number of giant locusts, which she's about to put in their outside enclosure. Sometimes we get donations of the really big locusts like this, but also when we get the smaller ones in, we've been feeding them up to try and get them nice and big. Um, obviously, they move around more, um, it gives the animals more to do, more enrichment, and obviously they're a bigger treat as well, so it's nice for them. Insects are high in energy and provide an important source of calcium and other nutrients. With more than two-thirds of Monkey World's primates consuming them as part of their daily diet, the team have had to start keeping them in large numbers to keep up with consumption. I think they're going to love these. Um, <laughs> we're going to just see how well Sydney does, because obviously her mobility is, is a little sketchy sometimes, so Chuck might get all of them, which I'm sure he will love very much. But hopefully Sydney will surprise us and she'll manage to, to get around and get some as well. Chuck is first out but doesn't spot the locusts straight away. Only the fixed cameras. The large insects are on the move, heading for the undergrowth. 
But out of the corner of his eye, Chuck spots movement. And pounces. He gets a locust in his grasp, but the trick is to keep hold of it. Marmosets have expert hand-eye coordination, and he's soon tucking into the tasty treat with relish. Oh, crunchy leg. <laughs> Sid is yet to join in. Both marmosets were rescued from the pet trade in the UK, but there the similarities end. They are very different when you look at them, and again, that's probably because of the history. Chuck was very well cared for to the best of his ex-owner's ability. He's a very healthy animal. Um, she gave him the right supplement. She really did try her very best with him. Uh, Sydney, on the other hand, is, is actually quite stunted. She's a small animal, so that's probably just due to lack of nutrition when she was younger. Um, and also, she's got bowed limbs, and that's probably because of, again, the wrong nutrition uh, when she was younger, so not enough calcium and vitamin D3, so her bones just simply didn't grow in the right way, and they've, they've grown in this kind of bowed fashion. With Chuck gorging himself on as many locusts as he can catch, poor old Sid hasn't quite cottoned on to the opportunity. Karen gives her a helping hand. So that's what it's all about. Chuck may have had the leaping locusts to himself for most of the morning, but now she's in the know, Sid makes sure she won't be sharing her prize with anyone. There's been tragic news for everyone at the park this morning. The two-day-old baby woolly monkey, rejected by her mum, Isla, has died. The infant, who suffered severe injuries soon after birth, had multiple seizures overnight. And Alison made the difficult decision to put her to sleep. It's a blow to the team at Monkey World and comes at a time when the captive population of woolly monkeys around the world is under threat. Sadly, in almost all zoos and wildlife parks, they have died off. So if there's anything that we can do here as a fellow rescue center at Monkey World, in order to try and work out the very best way to keep them healthy, that's where I feel our role is. We're not here to be breeding woolly monkeys for exhibition. The main priority is to learn enough about them so that we can assist those in situ so that they provide a future for individuals that are confiscated from the black market trade in country. So eventually, that will come to an end. The woolly monkeys, I can't foresee surviving on into the future, even at Monkey World, because genetically, the pool's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. There are 22 woolly monkeys at the park, made up of three groups, and managing them is like a massive jigsaw puzzle. One of the main difficulties is that there are far more males than females. And while the males, on the whole, are happy to live together, when it comes to breeding, the park's genetic pool limits their options. That's why individuals within the group are being constantly moved around. These are all of our woolly monkeys, and between the green, the blue, and the red group, we can mix and match to try and come up with the best solution for those social dynamics, while at the same time making sure that we're not putting any sons with their mothers who might go on to breed. It's a delicate balance. At this point in time, we have just an overwhelming number of boys, and as those boys go up, grow up, they're motivated to sort of challenge to rise to the top. So there's a fair amount of woolly monkey work to be done in my head now. The park's success at caring for woolly monkeys means it's the first port of call for other centres elsewhere in the world who need help. Today, Alison is finalising a mission to a zoo in Holland who need to rehome a 10-year-old female woolly monkey called Pichua. She's living on her own following the recent death of her mate. Pichua is one of the last reproductive females left in captivity outside Monkey World. To make things a little more complicated, 
Alison has checked and Pichua is the daughter of Chippy, one of the dominant males at the park. This narrows down the options of which group she can join, although there are plenty of other males looking for a female. Everybody's in agreement because we're the last place to be keeping breeding females now. So um, she's seen quite a few woolly monkeys come and go in her lifetime. I'm just hoping that we can provide her with a stable and good future here at the park. So big changes are afoot for the park's woolies in the coming weeks in order to protect one of the world's most vulnerable primate species. In a lovely tree-filled enclosure at the centre of the park, contented couples Sam and Sasak are enjoying life. The Siam and Gibbon pair have been together for nine years and are devoted to each other. Their enclosure is full of natural planting, with large mature trees providing a perfect canopy for these arboreal primates. This morning's breakfast, delivered by primate care staff member Sean, aims to encourage them to forage with purpose, just as they do in the wild. She's cut up slices of pear, putting them into giant pine cones and suspending them high up in the tree canopy. If they want to sample the treat, they'll have to work for it. The gibbons aren't as dexterous as us humans, so because they're so long fingers and a small thumb, they tend to scoop um, because they're used to hooking onto branches. So it, it might be quite a challenge for them, uh, but Sasak really loves her food, so I'm sure she'll give it her best shot, definitely. True to form, Sasak is first out, and scenting the fruit, she heads straight into the treetops. Sam hangs out to weigh up his options. At first, the hungry female is perplexed by the pine cones. But once she realizes they're stuffed with slices of pear, she makes a determined effort using her teeth and reaching and stretching to pick out the pieces of fruit. Leaving his mate searching for more accessible food, Sam heads up higher towards the more difficult to reach pine cones, suspended from a pulley feeder. It's not the easy option. The cones are tantalizingly just out of reach. At full stretch, he grabs hold of the feeder, but with the pine cone in his grasp, can't work out his next step. Frustrated, Sam heads further down in search of less problematic pickings. Sasak doesn't give up so easily. Hanging from a tree, with all her weight supported by just one arm, she shows Sam how it's done. Siamangs are the largest of all the gibbon species and have the loudest call of any primate reaching up to 90 decibels. Although today, they're more interested in food than singing. Unlike some other gibbon species, it's often hard to distinguish between male and female siamangs. Gibbons are actually lesser apes, so just like us humans and the other great apes, they don't have tails. Uh, but one of the main ways that you can tell the males and females apart is that the males actually have a scrotal tuft that can often get mistaken as a tail. Sam and Sasak also have quite distinctive facial features, making it easier to tell them apart. For a female, Sasak is quite large, but then she does enjoy her food. With breakfast consumed, the loved up pair head off into the trees, where there's plenty of fresh browse to keep them occupied for the rest of the day. For the past 30 years, the park has endeavoured to rescue as many primates in need as possible. Most have been victims of the pet trade, brought in from the UK and around the world. With space at a premium, Monkey World rarely breeds any of the monkeys or apes. The exceptions are the woolly monkeys and Bengal slow loris. And very occasionally, for social reasons, the chimps. But birth control accidents do happen and sometimes an unplanned infant arrives. 
at Bart's group of chimps, the primate care team are wondering if that could be happening soon. Good girl. Chimp Kathy may be pregnant. It doesn't feel like it's just a fat belly. And because of the complete shape of her, she's she's slim everywhere else and she's just got this big belly, so it it really does look like she's at the latter stages of pregnancy. So um, so we're keeping a close eye on her. Um, we've started giving her pronatal, um, a supplement for pregnant women. We're also giving her an extra milk drink each day just to give her a few extra calories. Um, so, but as you can see, she's very keen to show us her belly as well. So the other thing that kind of clinched it for us thinking that she is pregnant is we've seen a bit of a personality change in her because um, Kathy was always one who was quite standoffish with the staff, whereas now she's very, very keen to come and show us her belly. Um, and you've been quite... There's been times when she's been quite playful as well, which is quite unusual for her. So, you're a good girl. Hi. The team have already done a pregnancy test, which proved positive. However, a subsequent test showed negative, so they can't be 100% certain a baby is on the way. It's not the first time Kathy will have given birth at the park. 15 years ago, she delivered Ash into the world. She cared for the baby for the first few days, but then put her down and left her. It's not cold, Andrew. As a result, Ash had to be hand-reared. The father then was Paddy. The father now would be his son, Bart. Young Bart will be first-time dad. Um, none of us have seen him showing any interest in her, which is why it was a big surprise for us, as well as her being on the pill. Um, yeah, and so now he might be a dad soon, eh, Kath? You like the toy boys, eh? <laughs> Kathy is 38 years old, and if she is pregnant, will be an older mum. She's a fairly high-ranking female within the group, so should get plenty of help and support from the others. If she does give birth and she looks after the baby, it's the best enrichment we can do for her. It's encouraging all sorts of natural behaviour. It's also great for the rest of the group. It's great for social interaction. So it, it's not a disaster that she's had an accident <laughs> or we've had an accident. You don't have to look far for a perfect example of the positive effect a new youngster can have. The last chimp to be born at the park was Thelma, six years ago. And although she's growing up fast, her arrival brought Hernania's troop closer together. They're now a more relaxed and tight-knit family than ever. The team are hoping if Kathy does give birth to a healthy baby and looks after it, the youngster will have the same effect on Bart's group. Next time on Monkey Life. Young male orangutan Jin, who was born at the park, is moving on and makes his feelings known. You're all right, mister. Just calm down. Plus, Chimp Kalu makes her first friends. <laughs>